Hello, nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your Week in Nerddom Music Edition for the week of May 14th, 2018. This week in music, we have Spotify news, we have Carrie Underwood, a uh, little rant that we're gonna get into, uh, some new music from Sam Smith, new music. Janelle Monae's new record is in the news. Childish Gambino, everybody's talking about that guy. So much is going on. There is more to it, I swear. I know we don't usually do this many bullet points in the intro, but there's more news, so let's hit the intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. Yeah. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Yeah, generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we can jump into the news, guys, we have to jump into the sponsors. I skipped it last week and the week before because getting back into the swing of things, but now we're being sponsored again, kind of. Uh, all week, every one of these episodes is sponsored by two things. First of all, Punishshirt.com, the wonderful guys that gave me these shirts. Uh, for those of you that were took part in that contest, thank you very much for being a part of the contest. For the rest of you, though, there is this shirt over on PunishShirt.com. You can go get one for yourself. They're about 20 bucks. They're actually super high quality. Go support some small business over at PunishShirt.com. The other shirt is the new shirt up on the Teespring store. Teespring.com slash stores slash generally nerdy. It's the photographer shirt. Uh, I'm, do I'm doing a series of shirts that looks something like this. It's a play on an obvious, uh, already established brand that I just think is a little ridiculous. So this is the first of the series. I told you guys I was going to be adding some shirts. I actually have other uh, designs done. They just haven't made it up onto the, onto the store yet. They probably won't make it onto the store until next week. So this will be our first one in this vein. You can get your photographer shirt over at teespring.com slash stores slash generally nerdy. Now let's jump into the news, shall we? First out the gate, we're talking about Spotify, the streaming music service. If you are hate speech or if you conduct hateful action, watch your back because Spotify is come is gunning for you. Uh, this has me a little bit worried because I understand where they're coming from. I understand why they would do such a thing, but I also understand that most people qualify hate speech and hateful conduct as things that I don't qualify as hate speech or hateful conduct. Now, let, let's let's get into the, the where this is coming from. All right, so last week, Spotify removed uh, XXXTentacion and R. Kelly from playlists. They didn't remove the, these artists from the service entirely. You can still go stream R. Kelly music. They just removed them from playlists. So uh, as far as my understanding, because I'm not, I'm not up to date on my streaming music, I would prefer to actually have the song so that I don't depend on a, a internet connection so I can listen to whatever I want, whenever I want. But uh, from my understanding of how Spotify works, uh, you can not only just look up full albums from these artists, but you can do a playlist that somebody else has established. I know I'm going over ground that people already understand. There are those that don't understand it though, so I'm elaborating for them. So if you if you follow if you look up a playlist, or let's say you favor an artist and it suggests a playlist more people follow playlists than they do the actual artist's album. So playlists are really popular on Spotify. So what they did is they removed where uh, R. Kelly and XXXTentacion 
are getting a lot of their listens. They removed them from that avenue of the service. Um, so, again, like, that I can see. You're, you, you don't want to give too much ground to somebody that is potentially going to prison for something very horrible. Uh, but they updated their terms and their policies to include hate, uh, where, where is it? Hate content and hateful conduct. So if you conduct yourself in a way that they deem hateful in your personal life, let's say you take a conservative viewpoint on something that, uh, people who consider themselves liberal, let's, let's say you do that. And somebody who considers, considers themselves liberal will say that you are pushing hate content. Uh, then you can be banned for something that, by definition, the, uh, the, the Supreme Court doesn't agree exists. So, uh, I, I just, this is super shaky ground. They are a private company, so they can do as they please. I just feel like because they're one of the largest streaming services, uh, potentially even the largest, I didn't look those numbers up, but because they are in that sphere, uh, it it's just it doesn't bode well for people with a differing viewpoint. Uh, but only the future would tell. Maybe they're not quite as uptight about it as other services are that we use <coughs> YouTube. <coughs> uh, but only the future will tell. So that's just an interesting bit. Kicking on next, we're talking about Carrie Underwood. Can we please stop talking about her face? So, it, uh, just, she came out last week with a song called Cry Pretty, and I haven't listened to the song yet, but I know that part of the, uh, the, the news swarm around this song has something to do with the fact that she was uh, incognito, effectively, for about four months or whatever, uh, six months, uh, because she had an accident where she had to get... 40 stitches in her face four I don't remember 14 I know there's a four in there um and she like posted pictures to her Twitter or her Instagram rather where she's covering up her face because heaven forbid somebody who we are supposed to be listening to has some sort of physical flaw that not only physical flaw but something that she was not in her control this was an accident she fell and hurt herself and, and she had to get stitches because of it, and heaven forbid, that shows, you, oh, just, let's stop, let's stop. I'm, I, I've given this too much time, we're gonna move on. Uh, next up is Sam Smith. Sam Smith is old news, but he just put out a new video. Sam Smith's new video is uh, for a song called Pray. You can see it uh, if you follow the link in the description. Pray. Uh, is also featuring, uh, what's his name? Where'd it go? Logic. <laughs> the guy who did the suicide song, uh, last year, two years ago, whatever it was. Last year. Um, I, I really, really love Sam Smith. I feel like Sam Smith is, uh, is a rare voice in music. Uh, he, he is, not that he's, like, the only one who sounds like him, but I feel like he has something to contribute to the pop uh, landscape and he does it very very well so much so that i almost like logic now because he's on this track his his two little contributions to the song are not horrible and actually help to progress the story that sam is telling in in the song i dig it it's off of uh sam's last record which came out last year again like i said he's old news in that the album came out last year uh the name of the album is thrill of it all check it out again link in the description to the video let's talk about this song it's it's fantastic and the video is actually really cool too very cinema cinema uh the, the words Cinemagraphic, there you go. <laughs> Very cinem cinemagraphic and, and well done, well done. I really, I really appreciate this. If you like pop music, go check it out. Kicking on, we're still talking pop, kind of. This is more R&B side of pop. Um, Janelle Monae is number one on the charts. 
Janelle Monae's new album, Dirty Computer, debuted at number one. This is her first album to do this. This is also, uh, she won like Best New Artist or something years ago uh, with her first record. And so I, I am a fan of Janelle Monae's record. I just wanted to put this in here because... It, I mean, it is, granted, it's not like the, the absolute top of the Billboard 100, it's the top of the R&B al albums chart. So, still a great accomplishment for her. Congratulations, Janelle Monet. We're gonna kick on to our next bit of news. America is losing their mind over Childish Gambino's This Is America song. Uh, it's, it's a good song. Can we can we leave it at that? Yes, there is some social commentary both in the lyrics and in the video, but let's appreciate it for what it is and not try and dissect it to the nth degree so that we can understand exactly what Donald Glover was saying. I feel like, and, and pardon, it's raining outside, so we've got some crazy thunder going on, and I do this basically in my living room, so there's not a whole lot of soundproofing going on, but... Uh, I feel like the the reason Donald Glover is being vague about his intentions with this song and with the video is because he wants it to speak differently to each person who digests and interprets it. The way art should be. I feel like he's brilliant for doing this. This album is actually going to be, or is amazing. It's out now, I, I, I believe. But just the two songs I've heard off of it so far, uh, or no, this is this is the, yeah, <laughs> this is going to be coming out. Anyway, two songs that he's done so far are the ones that he did on SNL uh, a couple weeks ago. That Those were the best parts of that episode of SNL. I, this is so many different elements of hip hop and R&B just rolled into one song, let alone the other tracks that we've heard so far. So if you haven't, I'll put a link in the description. You can go watch it, listen to the song. We can talk about it if you want, but if we do that conversation, the conversation is going to be, this is how it speaks to me, not this is what I think he means because he's not telling us what he means. So there's no point in, di in, in, in dissecting it and trying to decipher what he means. And then next, now we're getting into the heavy stuff. August Burns Red has released a brand new video for their song, King of Sorrow. Uh, this is from their new album, Phantom Anthem, it, which is out now. And this track is, if you like August Burns Red, if you're familiar with their style, you'll see how this is them stepping outside of that box a little bit. This is actually in sections of the song. They're kind of going into a more traditional metal style. They still definitely have those signature bits of the really crushing rhythms with the really intricate lead going over the top of it and not intricate like Protest the Hero. August Burns Red's version of intricacy is something else entirely. Um, so they do have those elements, but they also have spots where we're getting into more traditional metal song uh, style, not necessarily structure, because I don't know that you could argue that there's a traditional metal structure. So I, I, I really dig it because it's them stretching, you know, they're, 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 they're growing those muscles for performing new music and more power. That's it's great. Link in the description so you can see what I'm talking about. We're kicking on next to Lamb of God has put out another cover song from their new record for Burn the Priest. This one is a, a Bad Brains cover for Eye Against Eye. And <laughs> this one is Randy getting into his groove again. I feel like uh, when they simplify this th their songs, which they kind of have to going to these punk rock tunes, uh, it gives Randy a little bit more room to play around, and he does, and it's very well executed. I feel like I'm not a huge Bad Brains fan, but this is a great cover of a Bad Brains song that I actually kind of like. So, rock and roll, new song, Legion, or new album rather, Legion XX, comes out uh, later this month. 
And then we're kicking over one more time to Bleeding Through, who just gave us a new track off of their forthcoming album called Love Will Kill All. Uh, that record is coming out May 25th. Uh, the song that they put the video out for is called Fade Into Ash. Th so the tunes that we've heard so far from this record, we haven't got a whole lot of vocal variety from Brandon Schipetti, uh, their lead singer. This song gives us that vocal variety. So in previous records, he's gone back and forth. Uh, majority of their music, obviously, he's not doing any sort of melody. He's just screaming his balls off. Uh, on This Is Love, This Is Murderous, he got a lot into that melody side, and it was about a 50-50 split, not quite 50-50, but close, uh, between his, his melody side and his screaming side. And then the very next album, it went uh, exactly back to where they were. So it felt like, and, and if you listen to the vocals on This Is Love, This Is Murderous, it, they feel a little forced. They feel a little strained even at times because he's unfamiliar with that style, with that mode of singing. So I, 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 that could be why it went back to mostly scream stuff and a little bit of melody stuff. I can't speak to that. I don't know for certain. But this song, this Fade to Ash song, seems to be seems to show him growing as a vocalist and I support that. I am all about it. It, it, it could very well be a side, uh, side product of their increased production value, but it feels like he's more confident in that side of his voice. So he's using it again. Uh, hopefully we will get a few more tracks on this record that are that balance of about 50, 50 with that melody vocal, because even on those forced bits, like the earnestness in his voice, when he's singing sells that so well, you want to hear more of it. So that's really cool. Link to the uh, video for that song is in the description. That being said though, we're kicking on to our last bit of news for the week. Nine Inch Nails have announced not only a tour, but a crazy way to get tickets and a new EP. So the new EP is going to be called Bad Witch. It releases June 22nd. They're also going on tour with the Jesus and Mary chain. For those of you that know the name, but never listened to the music, or you've just never even heard the name before, Jesus and Mary chain is kind of a goth pop thing that happened in like the 80s into the 90s um i'm not a huge fan my girlfriend is it's like it's kind of like joy division but without all the fun yeah yeah y you know what i mean so interesting i mean uh, trent reznor's always chosen very interesting uh tour mates and so this is no exception to that the other really interesting thing about this tour the the name of the tour is cold black and infinite which it's very fitting for Nine Inch Nails. But the other interesting thing about this tour is that you can only get your tickets in person. Tickets go on sale May 19th, and you, again, can only buy them at the box office of the venue for which your show is going to be. Uh, there is one minor exception to that rule uh, for the Colorado dates because he's here for two days in Colorado uh, up at Red Rocks. So I'm not going to go because I hate that venue. Say what you will. Red Rocks sucks. Uh, for the Colorado dates, you don't you can't buy them at the venue. You have to buy them at the. Uh, the Coliseum, you have to buy them at the Coliseum uh ticket window and and not the red rock ticket window because that would be kind of a dick move not a lot of people live by red rock so you would have to travel to red rocks to get the tickets and then two red rocks again to, for the show it's he played that one right i feel like so if, the only way to get tickets though is in person not even after the the release date will you be able to buy them online they are first come first serve only and only in person how, I'm passing this question off to you guys, how is this going to affect the tour? How, 
how is this going to affect your desire to go see Nine Inch Nails? I have yet to see Nine Inch Nails. I would totally be down to do this if it wasn't for the fact that they're at Red Rocks. Uh, but I also am likely going to be in uh, Louisiana when he's in Louisiana. But you have to be there physically to buy the tickets. And I seriously doubt that by the time I'm there, uh, there will be any tickets left. <laughs> so I just, what do you guys think? I'm passing that off to you. But that, again, is the last bit of news for this week's episode. What did I miss in music, guys? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is where you can find all of the social media links. You can find the links to the stores so you can get your nerdy swag or the photographer shirt or any of the other shirts that we uh, have as sponsors on this show. If you would rather, though, contribute a little bit more directly, there is a Patreon site. Patreon.com slash Generally Nerdy is the place that you can go to uh, support the channel a little more directly. There's tiers. It's all broken down on the site. Patreon.com slash Generally Nerdy. Go check it out. If you're new to this channel, though, please click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you are falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, then click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, before we do any of the clicking of the boxes, please guys always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>